You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for September 14th, 2018. It's not safe for work. Recorded live many miles away from the Pompeii Ideas Festival, where you can ignore the smoking volcano because David Fromm is going to take on Steve Bannon live. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. I'm a little tired. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Me too. Uh, we want to do a hat tip uh, th- right off the bat to uh, Boswood, <laughs> who, who asked us this morning, Bos and Good, at Bos and Good, uh-huh. what a slow week. Are you even bothering to do a show this week? Yeah. Seriously. And and you replied, I'll be reading aloud from Farnham's Freehold while Blue Gal knits in the background. Should run about three hours. Yeah. You know, <laughs> gonna, yeah. I'm going to read from a libertarian uh, Robert Heinlein book from the 50s <laughs> while you knit quietly in the background because you're a lady. I'm, I'm doing sheep to shawl. That's what I'm right. doing. We're going to shear the sheep, wash the wool, spin it, and then knit it. Mm-hmm. And it's it's slow TV. You'll like it. And, and, and you'll be added benefit of its only audio so it's a successful formula and i think we're going to try it here um we know we've gone with this being you know rigorous and regular with one hour give Mm -hmm. or take every week on friday uh, rain or shine for what is it 458 episodes now something something like that give or take i mean at the beginning we weren't doing weekly shows but yes but i think we're going to change that to since now that news has slowed down considerably (laughs) to a night which it is not artisanal craft kind of thing that really takes its time and gets into Farnham's freehold talks about the, the punctuation choices no. of Robert Heinlein. No, uh, no. no. Uh, so Paul Manafort has a plea deal. Yeah. That's really where we need to start. Yeah. Do you want to uh, do, do, do you with our new sponsor or no? Well, yeah, you know, the, this whole show actually is dedicated to the Pompeii ideas festival because it is, it, it is such a metaphor for the life we're living now. You know, the volcano is about to erupt every day. Mm-hmm. And uh, oftentimes we're debating uh, crap that the so-called president is tweeting uh, in an effort to distract everybody. Right. And uh, also well, just- debating whether or not, you know, Steve Bannon should have a platform at the New Yorker Ideas Festival. Yeah. Uh and that's important because Steve Bannon should not. But that's the point. The answer is obvious. <laughs> yeah, it it is he- obvious that 3,000 people approximately died in Puerto Rico as a result of lack of water and lack of infrastructure as a result of the hurricane. And, and that, as Chris Hayes said, the immediate deaths are the result of the storm. The deaths following that are the result of the government. And the fact that uh, this hospital that they sent, this military hospital boat, and then they had no plan for how to remove rubble Mm -hmm. to get to the people on the island. And, you know, this is these are basic things that competent government officials know. And there's only one party that cultivates and hires competent government officials to do things. Because they believe in, in government. Competent government. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> in the meantime, we're seeing things like Nikki Haley's curtains costing fifty eight thousand dollars, and no, that's or the that's her rent fifty two thousand. Yeah, fifty eight thousand well, dollars per month is her rent. Well, and that's cheaper than what was being spent for the past decade and a half as the New York real estate market exploded and they have had this floor on the fancy hotel for UN diplomats since like the Eisenhower administration. And it got to the point where it was costing, you know, three or $400,000 a year to rent out this floor in the, in the fancy hotel. So it made sense for them to move and they moved because the, it was the Waldorf Astoria was bought out by some 
Chinese interest that was compromised and they weren't sure whether it was, I, they didn't go into it on Twitter, whether it was mob related or they were worried about security and they were worried about the rooms being bugged and so forth. So they moved and at a, to a cheaper place, and, but it's still a, you know, floor of a condominium that costs a lot of money to rent because it's New York City. And uh, the curtains are, you know, motorized and <laughs> just this is a time when the U.N. has a hiring freeze. The U U.S. State Department has a hiring freeze. Right. When, well, when the, every one of the federal government's been told that you're not getting a raise this right, year. Right. Exactly. And so now. and now we're broke because we had to give a tax cut to billionaires. Right. And so this is why when when Lou Dobbs and company. And and Stuart Varney and company freak out about fifteen dollars an hour and freak out about living wage and freak out about moochers getting things. And uh, this week it was uh, Varney <laughs> had on an economist who actually hijacked his segment and and started arguing for universal basic income and yeah. said to Varney's face, "You have too much." <laughs> yeah, it, it works. And you it, have too much. And you have too much. And, and, and it's People not just are turning to socialism not because they want free stuff. They're turning to socialism because they see the distribution of wealth in this country and they see that there is money to spend on things that will improve the general welfare of the country. There well, is and, there is a word general welfare, not just welfare for white Republican men mm -hmm. with billions of dollars, right? Well, and, and he made the point, and he didn't just talk about throwing money at because Stuart Varney, the idea that anyone would take a nickel from this uh, completely useless wingnut on Fox who spouts... Who, who's worth $10 million, yeah, right. Who spouts uh, self-reliant nonsense and couldn't last a day in the real world if his life depended on it. Um, the reason that this guy didn't just spout this stuff. He said, look, the, the easy, if you want people to get work and, and get out of the house and, and do this and that and this and succeed, you have to give them a minimum basic income. Right. That will give them the ability to go get a job, to right. have a house, to have a telephone, to have get transportation to work. Exactly. All the things that you want to accomplish, all the things you say you want to accomplish by austerity and kicking them harder and calling them moochers and, and continuing to put your boot on their throat and choking them until they become millionaires, I guess. All the things you want to accomplish can be done with something like minimum basic income and universal health care. Well, and it goes and, to everybody. The universal yeah. income goes to everybody. So, But you, you uh, add that plus education plus health care, mm -hmm. and you've alleviated a lot of people's basic, basic animal mammalian needs so they can go do the things you want them to do. So, you can, so they can, they're freed up from the daily terror of trying to just cage a meal somewhere. So they can go do the productive things you wish them to do. Now, will some people abuse that privilege? Of course, a small percentage will, as a small percentage of, of humans abuse every institution. I mean, if you want to close down institutions where powerful people have abused their privilege, you need to shut down Fox News right now because yep. that's literally all they do. They lie to their base. They, they it was it was Roger Ailes' sexual predator petting zoo for years, mm -hmm. and everybody was cool with it because everybody was getting rich. So if you want to start shutting down institutions that fail their mission in some way because they're being abused by human beings, you have to close down literally every human institution in history. Well, and I'm wondering, at we I don't know if we're going to have time to talk about the Bob Woodward book, book which you and I have not purchased, because uh, we've heard about it up until... I'm waiting for the movie, Blue Gal. Early. <laughs> we're watching the movie every day. Uh, but his claim and and his verified claim that uh, Donald Trump really does not know what truth is and really no. does not know how to accumulate facts in his brain to the point where, oh, that's new information. I will now make my decision based on that new information. He simply insists, I know, for instance, that Iran is cheating on the Iran deal and we're going to end it because they're cheating. Because and, Steve Ducey told me. And that's the point. But that's the point that's left out on the Lawrence O'Donnell show. That's the point that's left out on Morning Joe. All of it is left out that the reason Donald Trump insists on his version of facts when ample, ample evidence is presented to him by his own people that mm -hmm. there is 
another story that the, what he's saying is not true. Mm -hmm. He backs up against the wall and says, nope, nope, I believe this, and you're going to make reality bend to that will. And the reason he does it is he can turn on the TV 24-7 and hear Fox News tell him what he wants to hear. And so can his so can his base. So can 33% of the American public. So, And they do. And they do. And that's how we got in this position in the yeah. first place. Yeah. This great and growing uh, metastasizing madness that liberals have been shouting about literally for 30 years. I mean, ever since Rush Limbaugh 30 years ago went, you know, network went uh, uh, syndicated nationwide. Ever since Fox News went into the business of just lying to people about everything, liberals have been shouting about this and warning against this day coming. And now it's here. And of course it looks like this. Of course it looks like uh, one empty headed rube talking to another bunch of empty headed rubes through the mediated uh, means of a corporate fascist television network. That's the plan. Yeah, that was always right. the plan. Make your base dumb enough to believe this shit and put someone in the White House dumb enough to believe what the base believes. And that's the part that I, I'm about four fifths the way through writing up a post uh, just about Joe Scarborough because he mm -hmm. offended my sensibilities today. <laughs> but I, I, I do want to touch on one little fact about what Joe Scarborough was deeply concerned about just five years ago. It was the debt. It was the exploding U.S. debt. And who did he blame for the exploding U.S. debt? Barack Obama and George W. Bush. <laughs> ah. And he, he made no mention of the fact that George W. Bush racked up historic, you know, pissed away Bill Clinton's surplus and racked up historic debt uh, through tax cuts, a massive new unpaid for Medicare plan, mm -hmm. and two wars fought on a credit card, right. one of which we were lied into. And that Barack Obama spent a shit ton of money because George Bush left behind a smoking ruin of a, an economy that conservatives insisted we could cut our way out of. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That it was time to cut spending, cut everything because somehow we have a deficit. Now we were not going to explain why. But if you add together the spending under, under Bush and spending under Obama, both sides, both sides, both sides, without ever taking into consideration that one was spending money to send their kid through college and one was spending money to buy a pile of cocaine mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because it, that and that and this is Scarborough. This is Scarborough two years before Donald Trump came down the escalator. That's what he wanted to argue about. That's what he wanted to bitch about. And he wanted to blame both sides and he wanted to play that stupid game on and on forever because there would never be a cost to that. Right. And he was sure, I mean, he was absolutely sure that um, the, the Republican Party was mostly like him and David Brooks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that and that what we need to do is tell everybody the government's broken, tell everything, the, everyone, both sides suck. Um, ignore the fact that, that your party, Joe, is 90% racist lunatics because he would not accept that. And he still won't. And, he and, still will not. He still won't. He still will not. And you put, well, and you put the, the idea that we're not going to talk about the Republican Party as it exists into a paint shaker with a bunch of propaganda that tells them everything they believe is true. Mm -hmm. The Republican Party has, has, has been a, a mob waiting for a demagogue for decades. Absolutely. Yeah. And, they've been, and they've been built that way. And what people like Scarborough told them for years is, you're right, the government sucks. It's broken. It sucks. It's awful. Everything's broken. Both sides suck. Both sides are terrible. Let's ignore the fact that I completely supported one side of this until two minutes ago. But you're right. Both sides are terrible. Both sides are awful. And Jeb Bush will save you. And, and next up, Tom Friedman to talk about Grand Bargain. And and yeah. what his base heard was half of that, yeah. which is, oh, Joe Scarborough agrees that the entire government sucks. Everyone is equally to blame for everything. So let's put a demagogue in charge who says the truths I know to be true that I see on Fox News every mm -hmm. day. And that core misunderstanding about who his own party was and what they had become because of people like him is the lie that will that will send Joe Scarborough straight to hell and keep him there forever. Because he's a professional. I'm just some asshole in a cornfield with a, with a podcast. I saw this shit coming. You saw this yep. shit coming. Every, every liberal I know has been saying this. The only people who didn't see this catastrophe coming and see the mixture of toxic elements that would lead to this were professional politicians on the right, professional pundits on the right, all the people who are writing ads, all the people who are doing polls. Well, people and the mainstream whose media. income depends upon it not being true. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, and that's the advertising that's revenue to, depends upon both sides being equally wrong and the voters not regardless of who they choose, the voters are not to blame for anything. 
No, never. never. It's never the voters' fault. It's never, certainly never 60% of your audience or 40% of your audience who vote Republican no matter what. It's, and you're not going to take off their little Tea Party hat right. and point to the, 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 the Bush Cheney tattoo on their head and say, you're not a fucking Tea Party. You're, you're a Republican. You've always yeah. been a Republican and you always will be. Because that will cost you money and money will cost you your job. So we're not going to do that. But we're going to pretend to be journalists, but we're not going to actually tell you anything except the delusion. And, and, and <laughs> just to cap this off, uh, five years ago, uh, Joe Scarborough enlisted no less of an authority on the Republican Party than David Brooks <laughs> to come in. See, even David Brooks says there's two Republican parties. There's one small crazy party and one big moderate sensible party that wants to solve problems like the debt. So let's all get together now and get the moderates in charge. Yeah. And the extremes on both ends can be marginalized. And then, you know, you and me and Joe Lieberman and David Brooks and Tom Friedman will fix this fucker. Yep. All the while. And he, was, he was writing books about that in 2010. He absolutely Joe, was. Joe he Scarborough absolutely wrote a book in 2010 about how true conservatives needed to, to retake over the Republican Party and focus on the deficit. And that was going to fix things because Barack Obama was just going way too far with stimulus and spending us out of the problem isn't going to work. It was a lifeboat book for him and every Bush supporter to say, oh, this is a bridge too far, uh, trying to clean this up by spending, by government spending. But we have to, of course, <laughs> improve our military. <laughs> yes. Hmm. Yes, we must. Yeah, we must right. keep spending on the military beyond all measure. Which brings us strangely back to our new sponsor um, or our new theme. It might be a new sponsor at this point. I don't know. I'm, I'm working on that uh, of the the Pompeii Ideas Festival. Yeah. Uh, which will be which is will be uh, reconvened as the Herculaneum Politicon um, <laughs> a few months later, because yeah. it really is a bunch of people who have nothing to lose. Yeah. Who right. are not going to be affected by this in any who can who can afford to play dilettante. You know, we can put a comedian on the stage, then we can put a Nazi on the stage, then we can put a juggler on the stage, we can put Malcolm Gladwell on the stage. That's all the same. Yep. And we can have the same people interviewing them for 60 bucks a pop who are going to write about them critically two months from now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it's all just fucking entertainment. It's all a circus. Right. Because no matter how bad things get, no matter how nutso Trump is, no matter how bad the Republican Party is, Joe Scarborough is never going to lose a dime. Never going to miss a and, meal. Never going to lose his health care. Right. And the people who put Nazis on stage for enter their entertainment value or put Ben Shapiro on stage for his fucking entertainment value because they want to stir up a crowd and bring people to the auditorium and charge them for it and, and seek out controversy to, to raise their public profile. None of these people are going to lose their health care. Right. None of these people are going to have mercury dumped in their fucking drinking water. They're all fucking dilettantes and they all live in a completely different universe than everyone else. So while they're playing – at government by just moving pieces around on a board because it doesn't affect them real people are dying real kids are getting locked up in cages real pe real families are getting wiped out in puerto rico well and, and that's to the them, big difference between chris hayes going to michigan and talking to victims of the flint yeah. water crisis yes, and indeed. joe scarborough going to mississippi and talking to Haley barber about how the democrats <laughs> have moved to the left yeah. and wear an old miss sweatshirt because that's my favorite coach from when i was in high school and you're not talking about anything. You're not. No. And and I did a post today about why wasn't Eddie Gloud Jr. allowed on Morning Joe to. In, he, he was sitting right there. Why wasn't he allowed as the one black person on the panel to ask Hailey Barber one question? It was so blatantly obvious that the producers of Morning Joe got Hailey Barber off the stage from talking about, well, the Democrat Party is moving so far to the left and the Republican Party has stayed, policy-wise, has stayed pretty much where they've always been, but they've become a little more purist, if you know what I mean. And Eddie Gloud, you know, his his ears just perked right up to that. What what do you mean purist? What are you talking about purist? What's the context of that? Everybody knows what the context of that is. Because the Mississippi Republican Party is running a white supremacist who defends the Confederate flag for the U.S. Senate. He is that is the candidate who they then had on later in the show where Eddie Gloud Jr. was allowed to talk to him because he was in the room. They couldn't actually avoid it. And this well, is Chris McDonald. I'm sorry, I'm going to I'm just going to finish up this thought. Please, Chris McDonald says and, and Eddie Gloud says, well, you know, you have to represent all of the state of Mississippi. Ha, 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 ha. 
And he goes, I said, how are you going to attract the votes of 38 percent of the Mississippi electorate that is black? Mm-hmm. And and Chris McDaniel said, I'm going to ask them what they've got for begging for scraps from the federal government for 30 years. Mm-hmm. And the audience booed. Where was Joe Scarborough? Joe Scarborough didn't say squat to that. He didn't stand up to him. He didn't say, hold on a minute. And then because the audience booed the senatorial candidate from the Republican Party in Mississippi, answering a question about black voters with scraps from the federal government, Mm -hmm. the candidate said, I mean, I'm talking about the whole state of Mississippi. We're very dependent on the federal government for funding, and we've got to cut that off. I'm done. (laughs) Well, I I just wanted to say that that's how Joe Scarborough keeps his job. Number one, by by putting you know a red ant and a black ant on stage and letting them fight. You know, this is Chuck Todd style. Mm -hmm. I'm not in this argument at all. I'm just an aloof, hovering presence Mm -hmm. who has no no dog in this fight. I have no side to take. I like Haley Barber. He's an old friend of mine. I'm guessing that at some point down the road. Um, Scarborough owes his political manhood to someone like Haley Barber. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Haley Barber, I mean, but Haley Barber is not an unknown quantity. I, I just pulled up my own archive and Haley Barber 10 or eight years ago was running for president. Yep. Or he, he was, he was sniffing around about it. And people kept at, people started asking questions about his, his life uh, down in Mississippi and, uh, and him, him, uh, but the civil rights struggle. And he had all kinds of rustic opinions about that. Yep. Uh, he didn't remember it as being that bad, <laughs> you know, and, the, and the, like the white citizens council were just a bunch of good folks mm-hmm. who, you know, just, just are concerned about their community. And he, it was like, wow, this really is boss fucking hog, uh, with a mask off. This guy is a stone cold dyed in the wool Southern segregationist yeah. who learned how to wear shoes and not whip his dick out in public. Yeah. But he's absolutely that guy. And my point being this guy was on the Joe Scarborough show eight years ago. Yeah. Everybody knows what he, what the fuck he is and why he's this way. And you don't book him on your show to have a, a an interesting, meaty discussion about politics in the 21st century. You book him on your show so that white supremacists can have someone to look at and cheer for. And Joe Scarborough fucking well knows this. So the idea that he's some sort of reformed Republican, that now he's shocked you know, he, he just he, he was stunned to discover that there were all these crazy people in the party and maybe I need to rethink things. And here to help me rethink things, my old friend, the bigot from Mississippi, Haley Barber. Haley, tell us again about how the Republicans are pure and Democrats are, are communists. Right. Well, you know, Joe, that's all true. It's all true. And that's why I don't trust a single fucking never Trumper, because this is who they are. All they're doing is hunkering down. They're sheltering in place using our fucking lifeboats until the storm passes. And then they'll be right back doing what they were doing five years ago. They'll be doing it five years from now, yep. which is bitching about both sides, complaining about how the center is 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 all having Haley Barber on their show to talk about the good old days and talking about how we got to cut everything because somehow we have this huge deficit. No one knows how it got there. No one can explain why. No one ever supported Donald Trump. But somehow we're in this mess, and the only way out of it is to screw poor people, screw the working class, and let Joe Scarborough keep his fucking tax cut. That's where they're headed. And if we let them use the vehicle of the resistance to get to that destination, then shame on us for letting them do it. Yep. Yep. So what do you want to talk about next, Drift Glass? I don't know. Again, it was a kind of a slow week. Yeah. Well, Not let's talk about here. Brett Kavanaugh for a minute, because this is outrageous that uh, there is uh, a claim that he raped somebody in high school and immediately... Yeah. The Republicans on the Senate Judiciary Committee have uh, signatures of 65 people that he went to high school with saying he was a gentleman. Sure. Same day. Just tore back three pages of his yearbook out and said, <laughs> most likely not to rape someone. Right there he the was yearbook. voted in high school, most likely not to be a rapist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, they were ready for that question. Yeah. And uh, that means that something went on. and. Allegedly, you know, at least the allegations are out there. And uh, the fact that we're not allowed to look at his record or ask the questions that the public questioning of this candidate is over 
And uh, this should just be very, very disturbing to everybody, as you put in your notes, Brett Kavanaugh, is both confirmable and impeachable at the same time. And that is only because of the Republicans in Congress Mm -hmm. and their shamelessness. Uh, And we've talked a little bit about Paul Manafort. Again, the fact that Paul Manafort has $46 million, including five houses, two bank accounts, and a life insurance policy. And a bunch of passports. Which well, are yeah, but those aren't worth anything to anyone but Paul Manafort. All this other stuff mm-hmm. is worth enough to pay the entire Mueller investigation through the end of next year. Uh, they're in the black. <laughs> Nobody can complain about how much money it's costing because Paul Manafort had all of these funds that he had to uh, give up like a mobster or drug lord as the profits from his crimes. And he uh, pays off the Mueller investigation. That pays for the Mueller investigation. Well, and let people know we're, we're recording this on Friday afternoon because, mm-hmm. you know, the, the good times never stop right. at, the, uh, at the freak show. Um, and today's the day that Paul Manafort uh, is entering into a plea agreement and a, uh, a cooperation agreement. Right. Uh, which means that Hurricane Miller has made landfall at mar lago It's made landfall, all right, uh, very, very is, quietly. And Mueller is, where, is getting many, many more guilty pleas yes, than he is. he is having to take people to trial. Yes, he is. And, it's, and each guilty plea is going to make the next one easier. Yeah. Each flip makes the next one easier. Well, this is just makes, also makes the next one less of a deal for Mueller to be right. have to make. I mean, he doesn't – you have to do this early. You have to make these right. deals early. Uh, which is which is, should be no surprise to anyone. This was also the week that Rudy Giuliani said, nope, <laughs> nope, we're not going to answer any goddamn questions about obstruction of justice. That's a no-go. That's a direct quote. That's not going to happen. No questions on obstruction, whether in person or in writing. Nope, 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 not going to happen. Mm-mm, no, no, no. Next question. Also, the night before uh, the hurricane in the United States made landfall, Hurricane Florence, uh, the night before that, Donald Trump held a one hundred thousand dollar per person fundraiser at his own hotel in Washington yeah. D.C. on behalf of Trump Victory Twenty Twenty and the GOP dot com. Mm-hmm. And you know who was in the hotel lobby greeting people as they flew in and landed to stay at the Trump Hotel in downtown Washington D.C. Rudy Giuliani. Oh, yeah, he's well, he's a charmer. Honey. He stands in front there and he, he <laughs> shakes your hand and gives you that bug eyed, crazy ass. Oh, Batman you got a hundred and... grand to give to Trump? Great. Oh, nice oh. to meet you. Yeah. Oh, come on in. Come on in. Yeah, I, I, uh, I just, I have a vivid picture in my head of what that looks like. Yeah. And I'm guessing it, it looks a lot like, you know, that shot at the very end of The Shining where they zoom in on the picture <laughs> and there are all these 1920s. <laughs> dead people in tuxedos and there's yeah. Jack Nicholson in front. I'm getting get a strong vibe from that fundraiser that it's a bunch of wax dead bodies, ghosts and ghouls who just have, again, to make your point, have enormous amounts of money to just flush down the shitter. Well, and a couple sure. of them were federal government employees. And that, yeah. that is something that ought to ring all kinds of bells for people. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, well, and go, it, you know this is, and this is, again, why millennials are not at all impressed with anyone calling them a socialist for wanting Medicare for all and free tuition is because they see where the where the resources of this country are concentrated and the wrong people have all the money. Well, and one of our just on a very local level and, and many, many years ago, the first of the modern governors of ours to go to jail, uh, George Ryan. You mean in Illinois? Uh, in Illinois. Right. Uh, we have a long and, and storied history of politicians in jail, especially governors. But before Blago, George Ryan went to jail. And he went to jail because I believe, as I recall, as Secretary of State, he pressured government employees to buy tables at his fundraiser. Ah. It was sort of like, and this is straight up old school machine politics. Yeah, Chicago stuff. machine politics, sure. Absolutely. You know, this is, you know, I'm going to give you a job and you're going to kick back your labor and your loyalty and a little bit of money to me. And this is just straight up quid pro quo uh-huh. clout operating at a much, much, much higher level. Again, proving your point that the wrong people have too much money, way too much uh-huh. money. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, if if the curtains on Nikki Haley's apartment 
penthouse are condo. More, yes. Are more than the average American makes in a right. year. Right. Are enough to pay for health care for a bunch of people for a year. Then that's too much money in the wrong place. Yes, it is. Period. Full. Because that's tax money. That's that period. Full stop. Um, I did want to talk a little bit about the fact that this is the week of a, an anniversary of 9-11. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, it's it's a, it got cr- mean mm-hmm. on yep. the Internet yep. because there is a, um, a, a definite tragedy that, that needs to be memorialized and properly observed. And what did we learn and so on and so forth? But 9-11 really was the origins of in a lot of ways, of the modern Republican mm-hmm. Party. Not the Gingrich um, uh, Limbaugh Party. That preexisted. But it, it was all of these ingredients were sitting in the pot um, waiting for the lightning to strike mm-hmm. to be shocked into active, malevolent life. Right. They were all there. They were all awful. They were all bubbling around. They were all cruel. They were all sadistic. They were all stupid. They were all listening well, to yeah, lies. Yeah, particular just... racism disguised as patriotism, I think is what yeah. you're talking about. The yeah. white supremacist... We're going to get those towel heads, et cetera, and worse and worse words than yeah. that uh, happened happened on that. It was day. taking the, it was the taking taking the deaths of of three thousand Americans or twenty nine hundred and X Americans, and hijacking that pain and that tragedy and that uh, and the grief and the national solidarity of the country, sitting down in a closed room among Republican strategists, say, how can we hijack this legitimate human emotion to advance our depraved political mm-hmm. ends? And how can we use end. this? Right. How can we use this to get into Iraq? Mm-hmm. To get the oil. How can we to use get this the oil. to get the yep. oil? How can we use this to, to lay down a suppressing fire on all opposition to anything we want to do? Because if you, if you stand up to giant tax cuts or stupid foreign policy decisions mm-hmm. or anything we're going to do, uh, you hate America and you love terrorists. Mm-hmm. This is the thing that they just stomped on liberals for years. And the irony and is, is that when we are under attack again and four Americans died in Benghazi, they flipped the script. Oh, yeah. And Democrats yeah. are to blame for the attack. Sure. So because it's because we can and, and, because we can. And it has never stopped. Right. The idea that if we just and I wrote a post uh, eight years ago or uh, yeah nine years ago on the uh, on on the September of 2009 uh, anniversary. Mm-hmm. And it's a long one. It's, it's, a, it's gone everywhere. I, it's been read, I don't know, a couple hundred thousand times by people. And it's called Like a Virgin. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to read the entire thing here. But since you do Bible Bitch sometimes, I want to do Bible Bastard. Go right ahead. And there's a, there's, a sh- there's a short passage from Maccabees that I used at the introduction to this, which is, they turned to prayer, beseeching that the sin which had been committed might be wholly blotted out. Mm. The Republican Party used 9-11 to erase the memory of how they behaved during the Clinton administration. They absolutely did it. They did it on purpose. The first hurdle they had to to clear was, we're going to do a whole bunch of shit that we blamed Bill Clinton for doing, which he never did. Uh, We're going to do a whole bunch of criminal shit that is impeachable. Which, um, if we impeach the guy for a blowjob, how can we get away with lying us lying into the wrong war? Um, we have to forget that we we bashed Bill Clinton relentlessly um, for not sticking up for the troops. Uh, we we impeached him while people were asking us, "How can you pe- impeach the commander in chief over bullshit while there are men and women in harm's way?" And we used American soldiers as uh, a place to hide something behind which to snipe at liberals you know they're off there defending our freedom mm-hmm. and uh and it's they're doing their duty and we would be we would be um insulting american troops if we didn't do our duty by impe- by impeaching bill clinton and they really just rolled in this shit for the entire clinton administration they lied they cheated they shut the government down um joe scarborough's on record uh, George Bush is on record. There's a long record of people saying you can support the troops without supporting the commander in chief. And you can, and to go in without an exit strategy is insane. Blah, blah, blah. Every single thing that Republicans accused Democrats of doing that never really happened, they actually did in spades during the Bush yep. administration. And every time someone tried to stand up and say, but wait a fucking minute, wait a minute, you guys 
hung Bill Clinton out to dry for not cleaning up your deficit fast enough, and you are now racking up the biggest deficit in human history, what the fuck is going on? The answer would be, why don't you love yeah, America? Right. Why don't you love America? What about 9-11? 9-11, 9/11 the, the, the slogan was 9-11 changed everything, except it didn't. All it was was a giant, bloody, tragic do-over. Yeah. It was the ability of the Republican Party to say the 90s don't count. We get a clean slate. We're not going to remember any fucking thing that happened before this. This is just an opportunity to stomp the shit out of liberals, which is all we want to do. But then came the inherent problem. Well, now that you've racked up another eight years of disaster and tragedy and shame and criminal criminality and corruption during the Bush administration, what are you going to do now? There is no 9-11 to come in and save you. What are you going to do now? And the answer is, well, we're going to put on funny hats and call ourselves a Tea Party, and forget that the Obama administration never happened. But the whole idea of erasing the inconvenient past through some dramatic, tragic event or some big thing began with 9-11, began with mm -hmm. them saying, oh, this is great. This is a get-out-of-jail-free card. Right, right. And they used it, and they're still using it that way. And that's the moment that the entire Republican Party got addicted to never being fucking held accountable for a goddamn thing. And again, let's not forget Fox News's participation in oh, yeah. that mesmerism. Oh yeah, of having actual soldiers uh, going up with a camera to actual soldiers invading Iraq and saying, "Say Fox Rocks, say Fox Rocks, Fox Rocks, Fox, Fox Rocks, Rocks, Fox Rocks." I believe it was Geraldo Rivera and maybe Ali North that were doing that. Oh, Might be I wrong about that. I don't think any footage still exists of it because it's you know in the past and the past doesn't exist and that's the this is the moment when when liberals realize that our one power mm -hmm. is going to be remembering the past yep Everything Pedro else class. Come and go. Yep. Let's, okay. let's remember the present can you read off number three because i can't and then we'll we'll get to our news roundup as absolutely as we can um yeah this is a tough one uh the number of unaccompanied minors detained at the southern border has risen to a record high uh since last summer the Trump administration has increased by more than five-fold the number of kids detained in shelters dedicated to migrant children. Uh, this month, there were more than 12,800 kids in custody, compared to 2,400 in May of 2017. And if you have it, uh, you know, we certainly want you to contribute to this podcast because we need your money. But uh, we also uh, want you to know that we support, in a very small amount every month, the ACLU. Yep. Uh, they are doing God's work down on the border for these kids. And um, just by way of do something, um, I'm involved in a very, very small way in a local immigrants rights group. Mm -hmm. I have no legal expertise to, to contribute, but I want to do something. Yep. If I can help them write a press release yeah. or frame a question or volunteer or show up at a protest with a sign, then it's my moral obligation to do that. And, and, your group is very careful about what they're doing because they don't want to paint a target from ice exactly. on anybody's back. Exactly. We have been specifically advised, well, to use certain apps so mm -hmm. that um, nothing can be traced. Right. And that um, when, because people are getting arrested here. Yeah. In my town. They're in in Illinois, in central yeah. Illinois. Yeah. Yep. They're getting incarcerated and it's happening very quietly. And in many cases, it's, we don't want the people that this is happening to do not want any attention brought to themselves right. personally because th they, it'll only make things worse for them. Yep. And yep. I respect that. So we have to sort of help them in the abstract, but the net effect is very real and it's very tragic and it's premeditated. Well, and, and it's terrifying because of the fascist nature of the opposition. Yep. It, it absolutely is. And they're not going to stop. They're mm -hmm. absolutely not going to stop at this. this. These are people. They have to be voted out of office forever. Yeah. Uh, to stop this and have a Congress that will not fund it. Speaking of which, yeah. the Trump administration has shifted $200 million from various Department of Homeland Security programs, including hurricane recovery, mm -hmm. to ICE. Uh, despite repeated congressional warnings of ICE's lack of fiscal discipline and unsustainable spending habits, this comes a day after we found out that they had diverted $10 million from FEMA to ICE in June. Yep. So that's $210 million. And again, you know, Medicare for all, how are you going to pay for it? Well, we're, we're able to shift money all over the place to pay for our priorities, which are, and who's benefiting from putting kids in prison? 
who is financially benefiting from that is a very good question. Uh, well, and who is ideologically benefiting? From right. That? And ideologically yeah. benefiting and, and in terms of votes benefiting. And, this is how uh, Jeff Sessions is keeping his job. Yeah. Don't, oh, yeah. Worry, don't, you know, Donald Trump might want to fire me, but I'm abusing children. Right. And that's what he loves. I'm getting the Mexicans else. and sending them yeah. a message. I'm sending the I'm, brown people a message to stay out of well, the Well, to US be perfectly of clear, I'm implementing the final solution to the immigrant problem. problem. Exactly. On, on behalf of, you know, my dear Because the wall Lima. is delayed, right? I mean, come on. All right. I, you, now I'm just getting mad. <laughs> now, uh, your turn. <laughs> well, and this one is also, this is, this is in its own distinct way, the most despicable thing Donald Trump has said. This week. Ever. Uh, Actually, ever. ever. Yeah. Possibly ever. Uh, because it really does fall into that um, sort of, uh, I want to say because it's, you know, this week, post 9-11, Republican, uh, free fire zone, say anything, nothing counts. You can, sh you can shit all over the other guys. No, this you, is, this you, is can, you can shoot 3,000 Puerto Ricans on Fifth mm -hmm. Avenue. Well, this is, and then I mean, say it didn't happen. This is this is Karl Rove mm -hmm. saying that Republicans wanted to stop terrorists and liberal Democrats wanted to give them a hugs and therapy. Right, right. Um, so vote Republican or uh, Dick Cheney is saying vote Republican or or Democrats will let terrorists kill your children. Correct. It's that level of wow, you really are just fucking evil, right down to your socks. You're not. This is not a mistake. This is not a, 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 an error. This is who you are. You are just disturbingly evil person and there's and and not mistakenly you enjoy this yeah. so donald trump just said screw it three thousand people didn't die that's just shit democrats made up just a bunch of shit that they just inflated the number to make me look bad because it's all about around, me yeah and they turned around and called san juan's mayor totally incompetent um and and there's no way to sort of approach this from a Perhaps you have your facts wrong. Perhaps we should discuss this. Mm -hmm. the, the only way to, to talk about this is, oh, you, you're a monster who needs to be deposed immediately. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you are not like this a one-off. You're, like, you're not a black swan event. You are the manifestation of your party, man. You are what the Republican Party has always fucking been. Mm -hmm. And that's why they love you, because you do shit like this. You just say liberals made a bunch of shit up. A bunch of dead people never happened. A bunch of kids locked up. I'm proud of it. And the whole fucking Republican Party is behind you applauding, saying, fuck yeah. yeah. That's who we are. That's who we that's who we love. That's why we watch Fox. That's why we listen to Rush Limbaugh, because that's who we are. And who you are is horrifying. Yep. And and thinking that it couldn't be made any worse by anyone else, Ed Rollins made an attempt on the Lou Dobbs show last yeah. night to say yeah. uh the Democrats are playing to Puerto Ricans who've moved to this country. Uh Puerto mm -hmm. Ricans are Americans. They are Ed. Asshole. Yeah. But Democrats are playing to Puerto Ricans who have moved to this country, moved to Florida, politics, and they're not for us anyway. So at the end of the day here, the president is accurate. Right. Because right. the only thing that matters is you're not human if you're going to mm -hmm. vote for a Democrat. Yeah. And let's be clear. Ed Rollins came out of the same. Oh, yeah. Lee Atwater. Yep. Carl Rove, George W. Bush Jr., and Rick Wilson. So many African Americans on Twitter yeah. reminded people of how much yeah. Ed Rollins has profited off of white racism in politics yeah. over and over and over again. Yep. And speaking of profit, yeah. uh, Scott Pruitt. You remember Scott Pruitt? He so he did something I, years ago. Who knows what? He you did. mean the guy with the private phone thing? Yeah. Is he the one? I, and the private airplane tickets? Yeah. The the he has to fly first class because people hate him. Yeah, people were peeing in his drink. <laughs> yeah, he he was the head of the EPA for about a minute. Yeah, and he's currently in talks to work for a Kentucky coal mining baron as a lobbyist or consultant uh, because because he's a mofo. Because because he's a Trump EPA head. He's the exact opposite of a decent human being. Put in charge of an agency to destroy that agency. Hey, have um, you had Drifus? You wrote at length at the beginning of the Obama administration. About the form that was required by the Obama administration to work in the Obama White House. I did. One of the many And how they did I a know. massive proctology exam of every single thing you'd ever done, every single thing you'd ever written, every single thing you'd ever tweeted. And there was no Twitter then, but blogged about. Had you done or, anything no, online? Did you ever comment in the comment section in a way that would be embarrassing to the right. administration? Right. A comment. Yeah. 
And it really was just, we're, we want, you know, a blood sample of everything you've ever done. Because. 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 Yeah. We want to run the cleanest, most above board administration. And we don't want, we want to come out of the gate as pure as the driven snow. Well, and I think it was that, that line of, you know, in order to succeed as a black man, we have to be twice as good as any white president. Right. And we'll still get blamed for everything. And he was absolutely right about that. And I think you and I and, and a lot of other liberals really resented Obama cutting us off like that. You know, we're absolutely. here yeah. to help you. We believe in the cause of a Democratic president. We want to be there to help you. But we've said fuck on the Internet. Right. And you're closing the door to people like us. And if you're just perfect enough, if I'm just absolutely perfect enough at all times and comport myself with flawless behavior, completely scandal free, my family is beautiful, I'm brilliant, everything, every policy I'm doing is to help the American people. I'm even sucking up to Wall Street because I think maybe that that's the best way to save, you know, the banks from collapsing. I'm trying to save the auto industry. I'm trying to get us out of a fucking war that is a disaster. And I got the Republican Party sticking knives in my back every step of the way. But if I just, if I'm just perfect enough, I can maybe get through this, and then Shirley Sherrod, I've yep. got to fire her. Yep. And, it, and then yep. it just started coming like, like a machine gun. Right. One after another, we're going to stop this guy. Yeah, he might, you know, the country might be fucked up and awful, and if things are a wreck, and this guy is actually the fireman who we really need to put out the fire, but we'd rather see the country burn than let the black guy govern it as a Democrat, even right. as a centrist Democrat. Right. And that is the sentiment that absolutely went for eight straight years. That was the Republican Party theory for eight straight years. Shut it down, burn it down, wreck it, slander it, sabotage it, rather than let Barack Obama have one goddamn thing that's a win mm -hmm. under his belt. And 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 Donald Trump is the direct result of that yep. because his entire agenda is undoing everything the black guy did. Yep. Yep. And, and it's racism. It's straight up racism. And, and Barack Obama's administration had zero convictions, scandals that actually went to court. Uh, he had a completely clean administration, especially compared to Trump, but compared to Bush, compared to Carter, compared to, to a lot of people, a lot mm -hmm. of presidents. He had a remarkably, who said that, scandal free? And yeah. and the right loss of mind, David Brooks David said Brooks. that. David Brooks said that. But you know, yeah. Blue Gal, that just shows you don't understand how deep the conspiracy goes. Right. He committed more crimes. He was the worst president than anyone who well, ever Well, and the lived. number of people more on crimes. Twitter who can quote, you know, Benghazi, was fast and furious. Baby parts. Baby parts, death panels, Solyndra, on and on yeah. and on and on as if, you know, amnesty. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, this is... <laughs> This is just – this is their stations of the cross. It they is. just go it's through this perfect, every time. Perfect analogy, yep. And they, they don't know what it means. They just know you say these magic words and then you're then you're you're right with all, the almighty God. And then you can go forward and just screw up anything you want because Obama, Solyndra, Death Panels, Benghazi, blah, right. blah, blah. And, and it's Fox uh, News and Judicial Watch and a whole bunch of other billionaire-funded right-wing fake scandal generators that keep this uh, ginned up. All right. And if you if you need extra points, you know if it's, if it's a goes into overtime, you, you drop to the three point line, start dropping in Soros and Alinsky. Soros and Alinsky, because that's yeah, the, that's, that's where the the go. real deep in deep conspiracy is, right? All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, we've got so much more to cover, Drift Glass. Oh yeah. Well, you want to play guess which party, or do you want to <laughs> talk about the fact that this is the month <laughs> that Donald Trump topped five thousand lies? Five thousand lies. Uh, yeah. A congressman named Smith from New Jersey suggested being raised in an orphanage would be a better option than growing up with LGBTQ parents. Guess which party? Guess which party? And then number nine, Drift Glass, is my favorite story of the week. It really is. Would you like to run with that? Because that's also guess which party. That's also guess which party. Two congressmen, guess which party, who say they inadvertently hung out with a Holocaust denier, got caught with him again. <laughs> Oopsie. And I said Oopsie. to you, it's, it's youngest child saying, it was an accident. When she was like it four was and there's right. apple juice all over the kitchen floor. Because yeah. she saw that if hammer. you squeeze the juice back, it would squirt like a squirt gun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was an accident. I walk in there and immediately she says, it was an accident. <laughs> so here, here's Dana Rohrbacher. Republican of California and Matt Matt Gates, Republican of Florida, 
uh, are now uh, drawing more scrutiny, scrutiny for hanging out with Chuck C. That's Johnson, weird. that far right internet troll and Holocaust denier. And uh, they're mm -hmm. explaining it away as inadvertently. <laughs> I just, I don't know what happened. It and, was an accident. Yeah. And as a measure of how my brain works, Blue Gal. Yeah. Uh, instead of a science fiction story. Mm -hmm. This reminded me of an Onion headline from 20 years ago. <laughs> this is offensive, though. But go ahead. It's very offensive. <laughs> of course, it's the Onion. <laughs> Yeah, but it's from twenty. It's from nineteen ninety eight, and I, my I, my mind immediately locked on it. It's a, it's an onion headline. Why do all these homosexuals keep sucking my cock? Yeah. <laughs> that's not the problem. The problem is not all the, all these Holocaust deniers running up to you at random. <laughs> no, no, that's not what's going on here. That is not what's going on here. And the same one too. The same. Yeah. And you know yeah. what? Yeah. Uh, Chuckles Johnson, whatever his name is. Is not oh God. is not a, a, a bland looking person. He he looks you No, know, he's a bright redhead with a beard and glasses and and, and a big swastika on his arm and, his, and, <laughs> and and bug eyes. I mean, you can't miss the asshole. He's the guy he's the guy from whom you run. He's the guy who said, What can I sell for you? No, 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 you don't. Uh but apparently they're hanging out with places where uh Holocaust deniers and the mentors of Holocaust deniers and just we don't know why. They keep running to the same Holocaust denier over and over again, but apparently they do, and they have no explanation for it. It's complete fucking mystery. FBI agent, former FBI agent Peter Strzok, uh, apparently one of his uh, texts mentioned a media leak strategy, and Donald Trump and Fox News jumped on that to say it's a huge conspiracy to undermine the Trump administration. Uh, he, uh, Donald Trump blamed the FBI and Justice Department for doing all caps nothing about it, it turns out that the FBI did announce that, yes, there is a media leak strategy to prevent media leaks. <laughs> yeah, this is what happens when you don't read to the end of the paragraph, Donald. Right. Or, or, or you depend on one text. Yeah. And he's talking about media leak strategy. It is a strategy to prevent leaks yeah. within the FBI, happens, which means they're going after the New York City office and Rudy Giuliani, by the way. Yeah. Well, and why not flip that on its head? And this is what happens when you get your news from Steve Ducey. Speaking of exactly. which, apparently, Don, after Bob Woodward's book and the anonymous uh, op-ed, Donald Trump, <laughs> uh, Trump's circle of trust has shrunk to himself, his Taco Bowl, and Steve Ducey. And that's it. He doesn't, there's no one else in the White House he there's trusts. There's no nighttime calls to Hannity anymore? Well, who, Are you sure? I, well, you know, that will be leaked <laughs> <laughs> because literally everyone around him is 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 leaking, and they think that putting you know what we'll do we'll have them all put their phones in a locker mm -hmm. at the beginning of the day. Yeah. Because well, what do you think happens the minute they take their phone out of the locker, Donald? What do you think happens the minute they walk off White House grounds? You don't think they're yeah. just blazing a trail to every because it and it's not because they're good people because they're not. It's not because they're patriots because they're not. They're cowards and liars and quizlings who really, really don't want to end up like Mussolini and his mistress after your administration collapses. Yep. They want to be the good guys. They want to they want to be on the same lifeboat as Joe Scarborough and David Brooks. Like, you know, I did what I could, man. I tried. I prevented it. I was calling anonymous shit in at two in the morning to Maggie Haberman. And, you know, what else could I do? Right. What else could I do? I made a few anonymous phone calls and then enabled this lunatic to do terrible things. What was I supposed to do? Well, Kellyanne Conway has been doing that since, you know, three years ago. Oh, sure. Well, Donald Trump's been doing it for 30 years. Yep, making exactly. Anonymous phone making calls, anonymous <laughs> friends. Be, pretending know. he's his own publicist. Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, according to Bob Woodward's new book, Trump told Gary Cohen to just run the presses and print money in order to lower the national debt. Because that wouldn't idea. do anything inflationary. He doesn't remember the Italian lira and children using money after World War II, European money to build as blocks to build houses out of. Oh, honey. <laughs> he doesn't remember what he had for breakfast. Yeah. He doesn't remember yeah. anything. All he remembers is the shit he knows that's just wrong and stupid. Yeah. The only thing lodged in his brain are dumb, ridiculous, easily disproved and long since disproven facts. Fox News memes, yep. Will not dislodge from the, the rat trap that is his brain. Now, the flip side of that mm -hmm. is that the uh, Urban Brookings Tax Policy Center found that the second round of Republican tax cuts, not the first round that added a trillion dollars, but the second round would add $3.8 trillion to the federal deficit over the next two decades. And yeah. I guess that's what's going to happen. I mean, 
I got to give it up again for Democrats who've been fighting really well. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to tell them on behalf of liberals everywhere, you just raise the bar on yourself because once you get in office, mm -hmm. you can't go back to my good, close, personal friend across the aisle who I love deeply and whose <laughs> child I want to bear. Uh, we just happen to disagree over the fact that he thinks the country should be a fascist shithole. And I think we should have, you know, healthcare for all. No, yep. you can't play nice with these people anymore. They have to all go and they have to be fumigated and be replaced with actual people who are interested in the American experiment in self-government. None of them are. They all have to go. So after November, which we're all going to assume is going to go well, although we have two speeches written because that's what you do. Um, we can't go back to the status quo. We can't go back to the way things were. It's just, you know, to quote the Joker, you've changed things. <laughs> yep. And and things are different now. And things are going to stay different until the bad guys are are driven out of office forever. And their ideology is on the ash heap of history. Because if that if we don't do that, then they're just going to come back the next time with a different mask on the same monsters underneath. Donald Trump says he won't enforce his 130K hush money agreement between Stormy Daniels and Michael Cohen because he didn't sign it. <laughs> that wasn't me, man. I didn't sign it. This, of course, is an attempt to make sure that Donald Trump never has to be put under oath to testify anywhere about anything. Yep. Because yep. as we know, that would be a disaster. Uh, and and by the way, Tucker Carlson had on Michael Avenatti last night and said, I'm not going to do name calling because that that doesn't work. And I'm not interested in name calling. I want to have an honest debate with you. So Tucker Carlson's uh, Chiron called Avenatti a creepy porn lawyer throughout the segment. <laughs> creepy porn lawyer and yeah. several people on twitter pointed out does that make donald trump the creepy porn president <laughs> yeah well that's <laughs> yeah um, also tucker, tucker, tucker carlson's, carlson's big really... counter argument to avenatti is that trump and stormy daniels had a consensual relationship and trump didn't do anything bad to her so it's no big deal sure Sure. <sighs> everyone everyone knows that everyone believes sleeping that. with a porn star while your wife is recovering from childbirth because you can make that should disqualify you <laughs> well and, and the thing that about tucker carlson and yeah. ben dominic yeah. and the rest of the, and a bunch of people in that boat mm -hmm. are the number of liberal or democratic or centrist or progressive media people who call them their who friends. Walk, yeah. They're walking around shocked that their dear close personal friend turned out to be an asshole. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course they did. They've been an asshole. That's that's who they are, man. They yeah. they this is who they are. They wear various costumes like you do. Mm -hmm. They perform, you know, like dancing monkeys for the boss for a huge paycheck like you do. Mm -hmm. And you all had this shared experience where we're all on TV and we all know it's part news and part performance and we're really in it for the ratings. We'd like to do a little bit of thing for the cause, but you got to compromise. And you were all sort of brothers in arms and sisters in arms. And now that the masks are off, it turns out all those Dear liberal or dear conservative friends that you thought, you know, you could hang out in the green room and crack a few jokes. Then you go fight out there and then you go leave and have a drink together. They were all asshole fascists all right, along. Right. And that's the part that kind of makes me hope that finally, finally, they're getting it through their head that you cannot trust these people. They're yep. not your friends. It will shiv you the first chance they get. Uh, Trump told his supporters that it'll be, quote, your fault, unquote, if he gets impeached. And you, yeah. you Drift Glass, wrote, hey, if that's the truth, medals of freedom for everybody on me. Yeah. <laughs> on me, man. Everybody in the, in, in that doesn't vote for Donald Trump get the medal of freedom. You get a medal. It'd be like a big Oprah show. Yep. You get a medal of freedom. And you and you because, yeah, it will be your fault. Good for and you. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sincerely I'm hoping that. I'm comfortable with that. Yes. I'm completely comfortable with that. Uh, um, Barack Obama stepped back into the arena. You want to talk about that? Yeah. Um, he stepped back in the arena a couple of times. He he's every bit the guy he was, he's smart and he knows how to give a speech and he's sincere and he knows how to turn a phrase and he's extremely good at what he does on the stump is he can't legislate anymore. He can't, you know, make policy, but he's good at a lot of things. Um, he called Trump a threat to democracy um, he, he chided, he called supporters out for practicing the quote policies of fear and resentment. Um, yeah, all that is true. And I agree with all of it. And all of it was true before Donald Trump was ever there. Yep. 
Yep. Um, all these people were Republicans while they were screaming for your birth certificate, Barack. They were all the same people. These are all the same monsters that you kept trying to reach out to. And the only thing that occurred to me was, we are so far from, there are no red America. There's no blue states. Yes. There's no red states. <laughs> there's a purple state. No, no, no. There really are red and blue groups. And I love it if it were true. The aspirational vision you had for this country is glorious. You just never gave us a path to get there. The yeah. path to get there is the political equivalent of what Sherman did during the Civil War. You have to wreck these people. Mm -hmm. You have to drive them from power because they're never going to give it up and they're never going to stop hating you for asking them to treat you like a human being. And that's just true. And, and it, it's boggled my mind. It always just, this is, this is his big blind spot. He never, ever, ever got it through his head that there are tens of millions of people in this country who hated him just for existing. Right. Right. Yep. Uh, I think he's aware of that now. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, think I, I think he's yeah. aware of that and probably has been for a long time. Yeah. He, but he was trying to govern from an aspirational place. Uh, I admire him for that. And I think that history admires him for that. And, and maybe he chose the better way in, in law, in the long term. I, can I share one thing with you? Yeah. Once upon a time, this is, I swear to God, true. Harlan Ellison and I used to talk on the phone. Yes, right. I was his guy in Chicago and he, he we would chat and, uh, about movies he he's doing and a story I'd written. And I swear to God, this is all true. And we talked about Barack Obama because I'm in Chicago and what was my take on it? And his take, I think, still stands the test of time. Mm -hmm. um, he's a very nice man, but he's far too nice to properly take on the Republican Party yeah. who needs to have their throat ripped out. Hmm. Um, and that's he's he's a good guy, but you need an ass kicker in there, and he's just not that guy. I I uh, want to co compliment J B Pritzker on the best political ad I've seen, negative ad I've seen yeah. this term. It's really good. It's really good. It's uh, really good. Bruce Rauner in an interview being yeah. asked if he voted for Donald Trump or not. And he will not answer the question. No. And the ad goes on and the interview goes on and on and on. He said, so did you vote for Hillary Clinton? And he said, I'm going to focus on Illinois. I'm going to focus, focus on Illinois, focus on Illinois, focus on Illinois. And he will not answer the question of who he voted for for president, period. Uh -huh. yeah. It's genius. It's genius. And it's just it's all you need to know is that he is such a coward. Uh, and, uh, he's going to lose anyway, because he, you know, allowed consciously and with a plan allowed Illinois to go without a budget for over two years in order to destroy public sector unions. And he yes, failed. He and then, and then he won in court, but that's another story. But, uh, he's, he, the people are so infuriated with him because he hurt the state so badly. Um, so he's going to lose. And now we have a new uh, campaign underway, I understand, today in the city of Chicago. Yes, we do. Well, formally, it'll be formally mm -hmm. announced on Monday. I am running for mayor of the city of Chicago. Your class is running because... for mayor of the city of Chicago. Why not? Everybody has it. <laughs> no, uh, the, 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 Bill Daly, Richie Daly's brother, is, <sighs> is running for, is going to announce that he's going to run. Wait, is this the guy who went and made millions of dollars in China? And like, was the, is, is it that guy? He was a commerce secretary, Bill Daly. Commerce secretary was, and like went, did, did all kinds of deals in China and stuff. Gore's guy in uh, Florida yeah. who told him, give it okay. up. You don't have a hope down here. Um, he's the smart Daly. Uh, okay. But yeah, he's, he's that, but his name's Daly and it's the city of Chicago. And I, that's all. I run a yeah. very long post about it today. And the short version of it is. Um, at the end of the last administration, the Daily, I wrote a post called The Rise and Fall of the Bridgeport Empire. Yeah. Because uh, that's where yeah. the Daily family's from. In case you don't know, very quick history. Uh, Richard Daly's father was mayor for 20 some odd years, 26, 25, six years. Uh, then you had a brief interregnum uh, during which you had Mike Bolandic, Jane Byrne, and Harold Washington. Harold Washington, the only reason Harold Washington wasn't elected forever is he died in office. And Richie Daly came in and he was president. He was president. He was mayor for 26 years. He wanted to beat his dad. Uh, the only reason Richie Daly quit the job is because the economy collapsed mm -hmm. and his entire administration was propped up by money. Well, and his he entire administration was propped up by the hope that Chicago was going to get the Olympics. Yes. Well, he sold the Skyway yeah. and he sold the parking meters and he was trying to sell the water system. Uh, to, for quick money to keep his administration propped up. And when he didn't get the water system sold or the Olympics, 
he quit. He mm -hmm. resigned and, and he decided to leave a legend. And once again, we have a caretaker government in place uh, under Rahm Emanuel, who's decided he doesn't want to run um, because the, the villagers were coming with pitchforks and torches. Yeah, yeah. And he's so been a daily, failure. Yeah. daily running in Chicago. I don't think he'll win, but I think it's extremely oh, interesting. No, you don't think don't Bill think. Daly will win? Oh, that's interesting. No. I, well, it it really does depend. I, I as I wrote in my post, I don't live in Chicago anymore, so I don't have daily contact with the boys and girls who practice the dark arts of city politics. Mm -hmm. My observation is now three hundred miles away, right. but uh, my it, it is possible he would win if the field were so crowded that he could sort of make it through with just with in, name recognition, with a plurality. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, if it if it comes down to two or three candidates. Um, I think that it could be a, a woman named Dorothy or a man named Chewy. Okay. Uh, maybe even Paul Vallis, who's you know perpetually threatening to run for something and and uh, never quite gets off the ground because you know he's got a lot of problems. But if the vote is splintered enough, then it's possible that Daly would do it. But it really is a test to see are the is is are there enough remnants of the old machine still in place? Is there enough yeah. fuel left in the yeah. tank to make a go of it? Because because you it know, is all new people. I mean, it is all new voters in Chicago, pretty much. And and from the times that the dailies were, you know, the un, unquestioned czars of the city of Chicago. Well, yeah. I, I pulled a quote from Mike Royko in 1973 mm -hmm. uh, that says, Daly already ruled over Chicago longer than most kings reigned over their countries. At this point, many of his loyal subjects view him as more of a monarch than an elected official. Yeah. It seems obvious that he intends to pass the entire city onto his sons, which is a gesture worthy of a king. And that is exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It took, you know, three, you know, interim administrations, but that's what happened. So Chicago will always be Chicago. Mm -hmm. And Daly's name will always be Daly's name. And it's just it, not clear if it's enough because people forget that Daly lost his first election. Uh-huh. He ran against uh, uh, Jane Byrne and a guy named Harold Washington. <laughs> and then he opened his mouth and and fell on the ground in a thrashing wrestling match with the English language that he lost. And uh, the reader, as I recall, instead of doing the polite Tribune thing, which is reporting what Daly meant to meant have to said, say. <laughs> <laughs> it reported the actual transcript of his words, which were gibberish because he yeah. could never form a complete sentence. And of course, Harold Washington, in addition to being smart and politically canny, was extremely uh, bright and had a massive vocabulary. And he basically ran right up the middle between uh, between Jane Byrne mm -hmm. and Richie Daly and won. And that was the moment at which uh, half of the aldermen in Chicago suddenly discovered they loved the Republican candidate. Yeah, right. And that's right. a different story for a different day. But uh, Chicago has changed. Let's see how much it's changed. Yeah, that's and the point is how much has it changed? It'll be interesting to see. Yep. I want to say thank you to all of our listeners, by the way. I haven't had a chance to do that lately, it seems to me. Uh, you guys are great, and we appreciate your support and your donations and keeping our bills paid. Uh, if you haven't done that yet, I know it's election season and you have a lot of places to send your money, but please keep us in thoughts as well. Uh, if you have that gourmet coffee guideline where you go out and buy yourself uh, a hot beverage, uh, think of us and send us five bucks. We appreciate it. Each week we've posted to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Bowie a.k.a. Bobo, Beast, or Mr. Fluff. <laughs> He's got a very mean look to him, and uh, he knows how to complain, but he's actually a very sweet boy. Uh, he loves to play, and if he's feeling extra sweet, you might get your nose licked first thing in the morning. You know, that's how you wake up. Yeah, we all love with a, that. that cat tongue on your nose, yeah. You can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, or you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We do love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service Go Postal Unions letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us because this is not charity. This is our job. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Our PayPal, postal information, Patreon, GoFundMe, all that information is there at ProLeftPod.com. Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter, and thank you for doing that. 
Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Oh, look, gal, one of the Internet Kitties just coughed up an Ideas Festival and then had another Ideas Festival in the litter box. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.